Paralympic rowers Gavin Bellis and Catherine Ross are gold medal favourites after together claiming the past three Mixed Skulls world titles. What they've overcome to get their chance is remarkable, as Ben Worsley found out. It's the feeling of freedom. It's like the wind brushing across your face, um, the speed. For me, it's what I pictured running would be like. You know, I've never experienced that and it's something I always wanted to do and, you know, rowing gives me that feeling. Horrible words, but I feel normal, if that makes sense. You, you forget about this for a while because I've got to concentrate on just the rowing. Early morning, mid-winter on Lake Burley Griffin. This is only for the very determined. For four years, Gavin Bellis and Catherine Ross have been training for Rio. He's definitely the engine. <laughs> He's the engine in the boat and um, I hope to hold, hold up a good rhythm and, and pace so that he can follow and, and uh, put all the power in that he's got. Um, and my wife trained me well. I'm used to a bit doing what I'm told, so I just uh, <laughs> just be quiet and just uh, row as hard as I can. Oh, oh, Georgia, take to begin with the chance here. Training for the Paralympics has kept Gavin away from his family on the Gold Coast for much of the past nine months. The time they do spend together is increasingly precious. Oh. No, Gavin's living with a rare degenerative disease. The symptoms first appeared 12 years ago while he was serving in the army. Oh, champion! Going for a run around the airfield in the Solomon Islands and I took off, I started running and I ran 10 metres and my legs hit each other and I was on my hands and knees on the ground. I couldn't work out what was going on, so I got up, ran again, another 10 metres. Same thing was happening again. I sort of gave up running and I was just sort of walked back to uh, where our camp was and continued on my business and it wasn't until I got home back to Australia that I went and got it checked out. The diagnosis was spinocerebellar ataxia, a hereditary disease which blocks communication between the brain and the spinal cord, causing an increasing loss of physical control. Invariably, it leads to life in a wheelchair. There's no cure and more often than not, it's fatal. Gavin was medically discharged from the army. It was pretty hard for me to take and then with the unknown of my disease and then not being a part of it, um, yeah, it was very hard because I like to be in control. I either like to, you know, if something's going on, you either fix it or give me, tell me exactly what it is and I'll deal with it. But the problem is uh, with my disease, it's forever getting worse and some days are worse than others. So, yeah, I was in a black hole, so to speak, for quite a few years. Then, in 2008, life took a turn. You're away in the men's 200 metre freestyle S3 category event. I still remember the day when we were watching the Paralympics, uh, the Beijing ones. Um, we were watching the swimming and um, he just happened to say, hey, look, they've uh, got a taxi up. Um, and he pulled out his laptop and he sat there for the next two days, researching all the different classifications and what potential sport he could do. Um, and I just saw that glint in his eye, again, that I had saw all those years ago. Gavin chose rowing, and four years later, he was competing at the London Games. But what drives him isn't success. Um, to be honest, that's the... To be honest, it's the one reason why I'm doing it is for my girls. Um, being a hereditary disease, they both have a chance of getting it, and uh, that was my driver to start, to be honest as well, not just for myself, but to show my children that it doesn't matter if they have this condition or not. Life just takes you down a different path. Doesn't mean your life is over. Attention, go. Competing in those Beijing Paralympics was Catherine Ross, the other half of this team. How she ended up rowing is also quite a story. Catherine was two when she was accidentally run over by a ride on lawnmower driven by her father. This one time, he didn't shut the gate. 
you know, just this once and my mum didn't check because he always shut it, he always locked it. Um, but it wasn't that day and ran around and the next minute, um, you know, the, he backed over the top of me because he didn't look. My mum was doing dishes at the time and she said she heard it and she knew exactly what had happened before seeing it and raced out with only a tea towel in her hand and scooped me up and yeah, it was pretty drastic from there. Her right leg was all but destroyed. 50 operations later, she decided to be a Paralympian, just 18 months out from Beijing. She was warned success in rowing was unlikely, so she did it. We went to Beijing and standing on that diet, we missed gold by 0.8 of a second. Um, looking up in the stands, those people who assessed me at that talent search day were standing there clapping their hands going, wow, this is, doesn't happen very often. And I'm like, hi guys, yep, told you, you know, if I want to do something, I'll, I will do it. Fearing. The two of them now share a bond far stronger than sport. I have the utmost respect for this man, almost above and beyond any other person I've ever met um, along this journey. And I've met some pretty wonderful people. Uh, what he is going through, what his condition will cause for him down the track um, is quite heartbreaking. And it has been quite hard to... <laughs> it's always in the back of your mind, but I, I don't see Gav as uh, going down that route. And if we can get to Rio to be there and to represent it with him, you know, would almost mean more than a gold medal. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Without rowing, I don't know where I'd be or what would happen, and um, so I've got a lot to be thankful for. Beautiful wife, two beautiful kids, um, and I can say that I'm a London Paralympian, I'm a three-time world champion, and hopefully going to Rio, so life's pretty good, I suppose. Ben Worsley with 